Hello there and welcome to this video on the bubble saw algorithm, more specifically programming the bubble saw in Visual Basic.net. Now it's important that you know the theory before we actually start programming, so if you've not already, do go back to the other video on my channel on bubble saw and you can have a look at the theoretical aspect of it there. Now we're going to jump straight into the programming and you can see on my screen I've got a form and the form contains three objects, two buttons and one list box. So if you've built that now, uh, do pause the video and build that and then come back. You can see the names here. I've got BTN Populate Array, I've got BTN Bubble Saw and I've got LST Output. Now apologies, I'm going to be talking pretty quickly through this because I want to try and keep this video size down um, as much as possible. So the first thing I need to do is forget about the bubble saw. I need to actually populate the array firstly. So if I just, the first thing I'm going to do is double click the form and that creates a load event. So I'm going to create my, my array as a global variable. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to potentially use this um, later on for um, other sorts, maybe. So let's create this and it's going to hold integers. So arrays in Visual Basic have one data type and one data type only. Some people will be shouting at the screen saying, John, you've not given it a size. I've done that on purpose because I want it to be a dynamic length. I would like the length to change and I want the user to tell me exactly what size array that they want. So in order to do that, I'm going to say dim numbers integer. I'm going to use an input box so they can tell me what size array that they want. Um, I'll say how many elements? Question mark. All right. Now what they're going to do is they're going to say, it's going to say how many elements and they're going to enter 10. All right. Now when they enter 10, the issue with that is that will produce 11 elements because we do start at zero in arrays. So what we really need to do is say, when you enter 10, you actually mean nine elements in total, don't you? So in order to fix that, every time we're gonna just minus one. So when the user enters 10, we're gonna minus one to nine. All I need to do now is tell my array that we've changed the size. So I use this little um, keyword called redim or redimension or change the size of my array. And I'll put nums in there. Oh, just sorry, num. I'll put num in there. And now my array has been altered and changed. Okay. Now the next step after doing that is then double clicking this populate array button. And what that's gonna do now is create the event. And or what I'm thinking now is I'm thinking, can I loop through my array? And you're absolutely Right, I can. So for i equals zero, so starting at position zero, going to the um, the length of my array. All right. Now, interestingly enough, this length um, predefined function here, what it does is it tells you how many elements are in your array. So if I was to call this back and say how many elements are in my array, and the person's entered nine up here sorry, enter 10 and I have minus one. So that means uh, num will be nine. We'll redimension my array to size nine. Starting at zero, that's 10 elements in total. So what's gonna be returned back from this is 10. So we'll go zero to 10, that's too many. So again, I've got a minus one from this. Okay, if you wanted to test that out, you could say message box i and print out all the i values so this is i here print out all them values each time okay but you can try that on your own i'm going to plow on and continue with this so the next thing i want to do is i want to populate the array hmm. now i'm going to populate the array with random numbers so i'm going to use this function called randomize um, and in there i'm going to write my array at the position of i so listen to what i say there my array at the position index position of i is given the value of math.floor, not floor, floor, excellent. Um, I think it's r and d and then um, it's brackets, isn't it? I think, and then we'd go up to, if I put 10 in there, it would go from zero to 10. If I put 100, it's gonna do all the numbers from zero to 100. So I'll have a bit of a bigger range if I put 100, I suppose. So there we are, that's done that now. Um, and then I need to add them to my list box just to prove 
I have actually done that. So LST, that's L by the way, it's not a number one, that's an L. LST output dot items dot add, and then I'm just gonna say my array at the position of I. Okay. And there we are. Let's just uh let's just test that works actually. So it should do that every time. How many elements? I'd like ten elements, please. Off it goes. Bubble sort. Populate my array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. So I've got ten random numbers now in my array. And if you don't believe me, I think what I can do is looking at this. Will it let me do it? No. So normally I have, I'll set up a watch in here and I'll have some variables, but I've not set one up. Well, anyway, you'll just have to trust me that my array has been populated at this point. So now what we're going to do is move on to the actual sorting or bubble sort of this. So breaking this down to steps now, we've got all the ingredients we need. The first thing we need is N. Now N is the number of elements in my array. So if I put my array ooh, like dot length, let's do that one, dot length. And again, it's too many, it's too many. I need to, I need the, I need to know the length of my array. So my array dot length minus one. And I need a temporary variable. Now those people that know the theory behind the bubble sort will know why I've got a temporary variable. It's because it stores the value before I overwrite it, okay? I'm gonna need that, you'll see why later on. So set that to an integer, and then finally, my swapped variable, which is a Boolean, because have we have we made a swap? Yes or no, and we're gonna initialize that to true. Okay, so they're the, they're the different variables that I'm gonna need. Now the next thing to do is to create our loop for the passes. So the outer loop has uh, or, or controls the passes of our arrays. So there we are. Do until swapped equals false. So until we make a pass and no swaps are made, carry on. Okay? The only time we can break out is if a pass is made and no swaps are done. So think about a bubble sort. Even once you've completed all the swapping, you get, again, you have to make another pass. You have to go through the array again and check that no swaps have been done. And that's why the bubble sort isn't very efficient. So continuing on from there, this is the, I'll just put here a little comment so you know. So this, this, uh, let's do, I'll just put passes. Okay. Now, it says there, do until swapped equals false. Now we haven't made any swaps yet, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set that to false. And it looks strange because I've done this here, I've set it to true, then I've said until swaps equals false, and then false. If it was false by default, it wouldn't even get into the do until loop initially. So I have to initialize it to true to get inside this, and then I set it to false because we haven't actually done any swapping yet. So see if you can get rid around that one. Now. The for loop, the inner loop controls what I hear you say. It controls the passes. Like, uh, correction, no it doesn't. It controls the swapping. So the in, inner loop controls the swapping of the numbers. So it's going to go to n minus 1. I'm just going to continue on there. So it's n minus 1 because there's always one less element that you than you need to actually than you have. So what, it's always one less element than you need to have, and that's because if you add an array of one element, it would already be sorted. So you are comparing one element against everything else. So it's n minus one. And what we'll do is we'll say if my array at the position of i is greater than my array at the position of i plus one, so the thing next to it, then make a swap. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is our condition. So that's our condition for swapping. Now, if I said, if the first element is greater than the second element, 
then make a swap, then you're going to get an ascending list. If I said, if my array at position of i is less than my array plus one, then make a swap, then you're going to get a descending list. All right. So that is very powerful. On line 24, that controls the ascending or descending of your list. Now, this is the golden bit of code that you're going to need for your array. So temp equals my array at the position of i plus one. So take the thing i plus one and stick it in temp. Then you say my array at the position of i plus one gets overwritten with my array at the position of i. So now at this point, we've got duplicate items in the list and this thing here has been overwritten with this thing here. Once we've done that, we've got duplicate items. We need to put the thing that's held in the temporary variable. We need to put that back in the list. So we do that, putting it in position array i. So that goes in there. And because we've done that, these three lines of code, these are all the swaps. This is how we make a swap. At the end of that, that'll get you three marks in an exam. Swapped equals true because we've made a swap now okay so that's why i said this is the golden bit of code that will get you three marks in an exam because you're controlling the swapping then after that we've ended that that's done the next thing to do is now print it out see if it actually does the thing so what i'm going to do is i'm because i'm going to use this output again later on i think i'm just going to make a little procedure, call it output, and then I'm going to say for i equals zero to my array dot length bracket bracket. Now I don't I don't think I need minus one this time. We'll find out later when I'm wrong. Dot items dot add and then I'll say my array at the position of i. So just output that, please. Uh, and before I do that, I don't want anything else in that list, so I need to clear what whatever's whatever's contained in there initially. So let's use the dot clear method. There we are. And let's give this a whirl. Here we go. How many elements? I'd like ten elements, please. Don't forget, we need to populate your array. There is your array with the numbers in, and bubble sort it. And nothing happened. Now, why did nothing happen? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this silly John here didn't actually write output at the end. We didn't call our procedure we've just made. You silly John. Right, okay. There we are. Output now. Let's run it again. And hopefully we've not made any more silly mistakes like that. Turn in. And populate the array. And bubble sort the array. Uh-oh. It's broken. Mm. Now, it says system index out of range exception. The index was outside the bounds of the array. Now, I have a feeling what I said before. Oh, look at that. I is 10. So I think all we need is a minus one. I said I don't think we need it before, but it turns out I lied again. Apologies. I'm sorry. These things happen. Let's try again. Thank goodness for trial and error. And will this actually be right now? Populate the array and push. There we go. So 9, 10, 29, 33, 38, 41, 47, 78, and 90 and 98. Perfect. So there we go. We've created a bubble sort in ascending order. Now, like I said, I've talked very fast through this to keep the video um, length down. But feel free to go back, take your time, pause me at certain points, and good luck on your bubble sort.